I'm Mark Gillespie. Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Cast HD. I have a trivia question for you. Name the distillery in Scotland that has an official distillery bottling of its single malt that doesn't carry the distillery's name. The answer is Knock Do. It's in Aberdeenshire in the eastern part of Scotland, and it's sold as a knock on the market largely to avoid confusion with Knockando Distillery in Speyside. I'm at Knock Do today, and it's an interesting place to visit because there's a lot of distilling history that is still here that you won't find in many other distilleries. Nakdu was built in 1894 by John Morrison and was closed in the United Distillers Massacre of 1983 along with distilleries like Rosebank and Port Ellen. However, Inverhouse bought Nakdu and revived it in 1988. While the distillery has been upgraded over the years, it has held on to much of its past. For instance, this is one of the few Porteous malt dressers left anywhere in Scotland. How would this have worked? Well, it's the screen. The, the, the malt is fed inside the drum uh, with a motoring gearbox and this um, down this pulley, and the drum revolves very, very slowly. And you can see the, the slots in the mesh. The, the slots be big enough to retain foreign bodies. We get pieces of straw, uh, bits of wood, maybe things that come from the malting plant, maybe something that's been in the bag of a lorry. The, the combs, the dressings, we drop at the bottom, they've been conveyed away by a screw. Just get rid of those. There, there's no fermentable extract in that. There's no point in keeping them. Uh, the dress malt's fed along, drops at the bottom, and then via another wee screw and the weighing machine in the mill. Distillery manager Gordon Bruce and the men of Knock have been trying to restore it during their downtime. What, looks like it belongs in the vintage steam engine rather than a, a bit of distillery equipment. Does it still work? Yeah, it could still work. I mean, it was still functioning when we took it out. Uh, there's just better ways, more efficient ways of doing it these days. The malt dresser is just one of the artifacts that collected dust for years in the Nakdu kiln room. It cost me a few bottles of whiskey to get the thing out in one piece, but that was whiskey very well spent. And it's living history. We can't replace these things. What are you going to do with this? Good question. Uh, we had it inside. We had it in the kiln for a wee while. We didn't appreciate quite how big the thing was till we got it outside. Uh, but once we opened up the back bits of the kiln, the wooden partitions in the kiln, they're just temporary. Once we get the back area cleaned out, Tidy up the walls, do up the side of the hopper, flatten the partitions, and we'll have a bit more space to play with. Uh, museum come visitor center, come reception room. Once again, Nakdu is unique in that it still has the original kiln. Most distilleries took their kilns out after they stopped malting barley on site. Nakdu stopped malting in 1967, but the kiln survived, and it still works. Control the, the heat and the level of smoke passing through green the wet bulb and the, the mesh floor above us by controlling the dampers. Uh, above the fireplace here we have a baffle plate, you don't want direct heat going straight on to the, the, the drying all the kiln floors and the heat we've got hit the baffle plate spread out, we get a nice even layer across the whole floor of the kiln which is above us. And also if you get any rootlets, combs, shoots dropping through the mesh floor up above it wouldn't drop on the fireplace and flare up just sitting at the baffle plate up above. Um, the labour intensive. Just need a couple of guys with big shovels just to keep the fire well stoked. Why did you uh, leave it in place after uh, everything was shut down in 67 with the uh, when the kiln was taken out of service? Well, we're really lucky man. Probably at that time they, they didn't need the building for anything else. It's, it's a common practice to take the kiln out, use the building for something else. The stories, the stories the short space for putting things could have easily fit a couple of wash bags in here. So, we're lucky guys. It's just one of several surprises Gordon plans to incorporate into his visitor's center. Well this is threshing mills, essentially a combine harvester. The combine hasn't changed in 110 years. They're just bigger, they're now on the wheels. Uh, this came from a, a shed up near Nethe Bridge up near Grand in Spain. We've got a story behind this one. The threshing mill was too big to get out of the building in one piece. The owner of the building wouldn't let us knock the doorway down to make it bigger. So we had to photograph it, measure it. We took the thing to bits inside the, the shed, took it down here in the trailer, took it in here, and we managed to rebuild it. It's not a perfect working order. And if you want to have a look at the end, we can give it a wee spin round by hand. 
Go ahead. still works as it did 115 years ago. The right bell we have come through here in a stationary steam engine. Uh, this is the, the, the clutch, the bell that we pulled on there, we won't actually turn it. The way one here is essentially the same thing, we're doing about arms. Uh, this one was known as the Devil's Wind. Uh, the farm labor was done, well version A, down the handle, you can see paddles inside that generate lots and lots of draft. The draft would separate the, the chaff, the stupid, dusty bits from good quality farmwork. Farm workers thought these things were unnatural and burnt them, so very few of them survived. So they're, they're lucky people to have one here. And then you've saved some of the uh, distillery artifacts over time, too, right? Bits and pieces have been, well, some, some bits and pieces have just been buried. Uh, I've buried in the pile of junk that used to be. Nice things turn up now and again, like the, the old head plate for the casks when the, the distillery used the, the Glenlivet suffix, which is a bit of a cheek in you know, my geography. Uh, old barley bollocks, this came from the scrappy yard of Huntley. Uh, supposedly, it, it was here, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. The distillery had a big clean out, a lot of stuff was put away in the scrap merchants. One of the guys that used to work here had the foresight to squirrel, squirrel away one or two of these with wee bits and pieces. So, you know, drips feed these, drips feed these, these pieces now and again for whiskey. So, whiskey is a good bargaining tool. What's uh, this piece right over here? Oh, the distillery dog. Uh, in the old days, it was, a, it was a way to steal whiskey from the warehouses. The dog would have a cork or a stopper. Now we go inside the sleeve of the boiler suit, and down the boiler suit and trousers, uh, taken into the warehouse, bung we pulled out, dog dropped into the car, filled with whiskey, cord, taken home, and that was the, the guy's nightcap. <laughs> Rascals. The uh, distillery manager's nightmare, right? Uh, it was part and parcel of the game. Uh, there was always a certain amount of repartition of goods went on. Uh, as long as it wasn't being done for profit or being sold or it wasn't being yeah, used, it was uh, probably most people would turn up a light in idea. The current men of Knock have slowly built up their collection. Gordon Bruce says he and his team are just custodians of Knock Do's history and they're trying to preserve it for future generations. A full-fledged visitor center at Nakdu is still several years away, but the distillery does accept visitors by appointment. Call ahead. You might get to see some of this history in person. For more on whiskey, the people who make it in cask strength conversation, visit us on the web at whiskeycast.com. I'm Mark Gillespie.